been like, okay, here's five points we want to talk about. Let's do that. Stick to that. Let's do this. We can still, uh, yeah, if you already have rant topics, then we can go for it, or we can go to a different type topic. I can handle it. Um, the week after next, two weeks from now, do we have a topic? That should be Chewy. That's the 10th. I thought we were bringing Chewy on later than that. Is it? Oh, is it later than the 10th? Uh, I'm not sure. We don't have to do Chewy on the 10th. Oh, yes. We could. Because <clears throat> da, 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 tomorrow, but two weeks. Uh, yeah, we, sh- we should be talking about the end of the story at that point. Well, we have the 10th and we have the 17th. Which day are we having Chewy on? Uh, the 17th. That would make more sense. Have Chewy on the 17th. We'll talk about the ending of the story on the 10th. Because that'll be the two-week period. Uh, uh, Give it a day. Give it a day. I would almost do the story on the 17th then and Chewy on the 10th. Okay, I'll let him know. Because technically I, I, two weeks I haven't told him a date. That would be the 11th. All right, I haven't told him a date, so I'll tell him the 10th is when we plan to have him on to make sure that he gives all of his stuff. Okay, and if he can't make it, we'll push him to the 24th. All right. Um, yeah, okay, never mind. I was going to say we should do a show on the Mog Talk interview, but we don't we really can. have time because we can't count for it today. I don't have time to go through this and, and point form it. <laughs> I, it's, I know, it's a really good interview. Uh... I mean, I will add it to our notes so that we can mention it, but that's about it. All right. What's the title of the episode? Triple X. Which is the Roman numerals for 30. Sorry? It's triple X, like the Roman numerals for 30. But not like XXX. It's actually just called triple, spelled out triple, then X. I was like, I can't put triple X. Because I'm pretty sure somewhere someone will be like, that's that's not kosher. Sure. You mean like the movie, right? Yes. Except better? I'd hope. <laughs> hope Triple X. It's by Vin Diesel. It's terrible. Yeah. The original movie, I'm not too. We're, I'm not too. Uh, I, I'm okay with it's. They made a uh, sequel. With ice like ten years later, they made a sequel. The tr- the third. It's the third installment because they made a sequel with Ice Cube, and then the third installment is both Vin Diesel and Ice Cube. Whoa! Wait! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. 
Whoa, what? The new Code Geass came out. I think those I think those five points are probably probably like I think what we could really base a good conversation on. What is the third one? Uh FC con like Diadem is considered FC content because you need the boat like the boats and like the the Difficulty and the types of drops you get out of the the diadem versus like you know how we queue uh, the the drops you get out of yeah FC related one is better like you have much higher chances of getting more chests and higher chances of getting better like got it so I don't know if that's changed I mean I can go back and read it but it's supposed to be that if you do it with your FC you have better loot there. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Hey, El Chorizo. We're actually supposed to be live now, so um. Oh, hey, yeah. Probably want to take us on. Yeah, I will do that. Let me get a sip of this. You. We'll do, I will do that. <clears throat> All right. Today is Monday. J oh, no. Let's take that again. Uh, fuck. Today is, <laughs> today is Monday, March 27th, 2017. This is episode 30, Triple X of Maelstrom Radio. Maelstrom Radio. With your hosts, Flatus and Shinder.
And welcome everybody to Maelstrom Radio. My name is Flatus, and with me, this guy. <laughs> it's, you know, just, I'm just this guy. Sh it's Shin. I, I could be somebody different. It, it could be. I had nothing for you today. Maybe I did. Maybe I did have something written, but it's been a weird day. It's been a very off day. I almost forgot to tweet. <laughs> See, it's been an off, weird, off, day, very off day for us. Ah, uh, dude. Okay. First of all, we've made it thirty episodes. <laughs> we haven't quite made it thirty episodes. We have to get through tonight's first. Yeah. You didn't have me muted this time, so that's always a good start. Listen, if I'm going to start doing things right, episode 30 sounds like a good place to start. Uh, man, I don't, I don't even know where to begin today. Uh, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I almost had like a good transition there, and then we'd stop. Yeah, well, I, you know, we, uh, <laughs> I don't, everybody, you know what, for everybody that subscribes to our show, they're probably like, this is about par for the course. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> this is about par for the course. Speaking of par for the course. Gruda game. go with, you know what else is a good place to start? Uh, recruiting for our FC Gruda game. I was just going to say joining, but hey, that works too. Yeah. So, uh, yo. <laughs> Garuda Gang's on Famfrit. It's probably the more, most fun FC that you could probably join on Famfrit. Uh, and there's probably other FCs on Famfrit that are like, no, we're the most fun. I don't know about that, because any... <laughs> They've never heard your experimental comedy. That's true, my experimental and comedy. And after being so. in your FC for a while, I wish I hadn't either. <laughs> Listen, it's not bad. It's only experimental. <laughs> you gotta know it's bad. You gotta know it's experimental, so that way you know, hey, this is good. I can keep working on this. Uh, so yeah, we uh, a bunch of uh, active people playing. Uh, we <laughs> Friday night was uh, was that Saturday night? Saturday no, no, no Friday, Friday night. Friday night. Friday, Friday night was night. experimental. Friday night got real silly. Ah. <laughs> uh, if you like Our, drinking uh, and gaming, Mage did not realize the entire time that he was completely broken. Uh huh. He was uh, a little worse for the wear. It looked about four or five sheets to the wind. It was a great night. It was fantastic. Uh, my favorite part is that we queued and we ended up getting uh, Brave, Fla uh, Brave Locks Longstop uh, Dungeon. Twice. <laughs> and then we got it again and we're all like man really again okay we'll just go we'll pull, do big pulls we'll get through it pretty quick the whole time we're doing this having him know that we were just in here gets to the very last boss and he's just like guys i think we were in here already <laughs> like instantly everyone just stops and dies a lot <laughs> also you know Pretty sure. Oh, the Discord thing was fantastic as well. The whole time trying to get him to figure out Discord, and he's like, "I don't know, it's wrong. I give up." He's like, "Well, as long as you can hear us, we figured there was something wrong with his audio." Uh, nope. He somehow in his in his drunken state set his audio to be voice voice activation, but sent the set the sensitivity really low, so it took screaming to pick up his voice. There was a very happy ending to that story in that we finally got him talking on Discord when his dog started barking and we could hear the dog. Yeah, we were like, woof! And I was like, what? <laughs> I thought my dog had barked. I looked over him like, oh, he's sleeping. And then he, yeah, and then he was just like, shut up. I was like, it was him. All right. So uh, also, we did a thing. Besides As we tend to do. Saturday night was it also an interesting night? Visited uh, uh, Ultros there. We did visit Ultros. Uh, we and, went and to who did we? Who did come? Who came out on uh, Ultros? Uh, let's see. You were there. Chili was there. Paul was there, and and Gunt Thunderbuns is there. 
good old oh gunt thunderbuns gunt thunderbuns best best lalafell in the history of lalafell listen if on a scale of lalafells one being potato 10 being gunt thunderbuns you'd probably want to be gunt thunderbuns but there already is a gunt thunderbun so you could only strive to be him you'll never be him but you can only strive to be him. So yeah, on Saturday we headed over to Ultros and we were streaming over with Moogle Ground as they had invited us on our show. Uh, you can go take a listen to that. Their episode should be up on phoenixdownradio.com now, I think. Did we uh, did we get a solid name on that episode? I could look it up. Real quick. I don't think we had one. There was some we... pretty interesting ones thrown around, but I'm not quite sure. I want to know what they picked. <laughs> Oh, and uh, as of recording this right now, uh, their episode is not yet up on Phoenix Down Radio. <laughs> I don't blame them. Because <laughs> I'm a great pretty, time. I'm pretty sure if they pick the name, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a little bit of a clash over the name. Uh, I'll leave that one. You gotta go listen to that episode to even understand the whole thing. Uh. So, speaking of listening, like that one? That was a good segue. I think that was a really good segue. Uh, the Far Edge of Fate, Final Fantasy XIV, original soundtrack. I'm really disappointed with this. <sighs> on one hand, I really, really, really want the soundtrack because the music is beautiful. But on the other hand, the Square Enix store is the worst thing that I've ever dealt with. And I do not want to give them any more money because they just, on principle, they're terrible. Yeah, and also, you get a lot of tracks for this one. So... Well, that seems about normal for most of their CDs. There's 50 tracks spanning uh, patch 3.2 to 3.5 part 2. Yeah. It's a good, amount of, good and, amount of music. And you get the Nidhogg minion. It's true. A little chibi Nidhogg. Whether that's worth the fifty dollars US to you, who knows? I don't know. I wonder if it'll hit iTunes and how much it'll be on iTunes versus. <laughs> I, I'm going to take a guess. Based since it's about fifty dollars uh, US, it's probably about the same as the other CDs. The other CDs tended to be about forty US, so this is a little bit more expensive. So who knows? It's, a, it's also a lot of music though, so it's not. I can't complain. There, I mean, there's just some dope tracks there. <laughs> it's like great music. And Alex they did. We're talking about like Alexander the Creator and all of that on the CD. So, yeah. It's... Here's my thing: if they sold like a box set of all the CDs for like one flat price with You'd all, like, I would. I mean, but unless they sold it at Fan Fest and they're like, you can get all this for like X amount of dollars. I take it like a fan fest like box set of all the CDs versus me buying them one by one. Because the CD should not cost that much. Also, if you printed them on CD discs <laughs> versus Blu-rays, it'd probably save me a lot of money. Yeah, I I know they're doing special content and stuff for the Blu-rays, but I really don't know if there's a lot of value out on there or if it would make sense for them to do even like a two-tiered system where they have uh, Blu-rays being sold and uh, the normal. Uh, just CDs being sold with the MP3s. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know why. Maybe there's a reason for Blu-ray. Maybe it's sound quality purposes. Well, there is other uh, content that they have on the Blu-ray disc. I don't know why they chose that. Maybe it's even just a larger format so they could put more tracks onto a single CD. But I still think it would be cheaper to do multiple CDs than it that. Would, it would be. Um... I know, the first thing I did, I, I've done when I got my CDs was I took them, there's an MP3 folder on there, and I just took all the MP3s out, put them onto my computer, and I have them on my phone so I can listen to it all the time. You have a Blu-ray reader on your PC? I bought one just to take the music off of these CDs. <laughs> it's a very, very mistake, and I'm very glad that I did it. Yeah. Well, pre-orders are now available. It's 50 bucks, and if you want a minion. So. Uh, this is probably the least important piece of news that we have. It's true. 
Uh, patch 3.56 launches tomorrow. Ooh. Be the end of the Heavensward uh, storyline. We don't know if we're getting a trial. <laughs> there's no, there's actually no, still no official notes up, right? It's just still the preview of 3.56. Yep, they just have the preview. Um, I'm sure, like, Shin or myself can keep on uh, Twitter watch. Just If they do post, I don't mind breaking news and see if there's anything real quick on there that we need to be like, oh my god, there's a trial or something like that. Like, I'll... I'll bust that out. If something happens in the middle of the show, we will have a breaking news. Even though we don't have a really great soundboard to have breaking news, we should probably get on that. Uh, we don't. I mean, I almost created. I, if I had time today, I was going to create a uh, bumper for news, like or a news bumper. It was going to be super cheesy, but it was going to be a news bumper. I can create a Glad breaking didn't news have bumper. Time. <laughs> you would have loved it. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> Uh, we also have the the invite friends back to Eorzea callback campaign is still ongoing. Uh, if you have friends who haven't subscribed for over 90 days, you can go ahead and invite them back into the game now. And it counts as refer friends. So if, if it's, that's something you've been wanting is like, man, I wish I had friends that played, but they haven't played in a long time. And I, I don't want to do a recruiter friend. Get them to come back. And guess what? You still get the bonuses and benefits of a recruiter friend. So. Thinking outside the box there, Squeenix. I like it. Recruiter friends, not just for new players anymore. It's <laughs> bring back some old ones. Just re- uh, invite everyone back. Uh-huh. Uh, we also have some community news. Uh, Shen, you want to go ahead and take this? Sure. We've got a couple pieces of news around the community. Uh, last week, we mentioned that Fanfort's having a battle royale happening on April 29th. These are going to be 4v4 PvP battles with the current normal light party makeup of one tank, one healer, two DPS. Uh, if you would like to sign up, go ahead and check out the Fam for it Facebook page. Um, one of them, if you can't find it, send us a message and we will happily link it to you. I thought I had more on that. Apparently, I don't. <laughs> I, uh, there's also oh. there's there's prize money. There is prize money. I think it's four million gil to the team that wins, and two million gil to the team that uh, comes in second. Yep. So if you like killing other players and you want to win money doing it, don't try the feast. Do this. Yeah. Feast doesn't give you four million gil. Uh, there's also a community project going on on Reddit right now to wish uh, Yoshida a happy birthday and to give our thanks for uh, Final Fantasy XIV and such. The deadline was recently, but it was extended to March 31st, so four days from now. Uh, if you'd like to provide screenshots or a message or something, uh, go check out the Reddit thread. And uh, yeah, I think it's kind of a, a nice touch that the, the Final Fantasy community can kind of give back there. Maelstrom Radio wishes Yoshida a happy birthday. And gives our thanks. Y- Yoshida! Uh, final piece of community news. Uh, we just noticed this today, but a couple weeks ago, Mog Talk hit their 100th episode, so congrats to them. And they, as part of this, they did an interview with Yoshida. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't notice it in time, and I couldn't get it into our uh, schedule. So go check out the interview that they did. Uh, it's all uh, written down. It's on their website, on their blog. Uh, there's some information on raids, PvP, and some just miscellaneous parts. Uh, but there is some interesting little tidbits in there, so I would definitely encourage you to go check it out. Absolutely. And I, I honestly go read it because it's probably the best interview that we've in a gotten. Little while. Yeah, in a little while. Like, because Mog Talk, they just ask the best questions. Like, Ch- Chili over there asks, not, not Chili with an E, but Chili with a Y, <laughs> uh, asks, like, the questions that Final Fantasy 14 players want to know. So. Well, uh, um, one of the uh, interesting bits, and you should go read the full article for this, was that they they asked about having achievements for our hardcore raids. Uh, so, for example, if you're doing fights in different ways, so time locked or having certain item levels or uh, things like that, uh, Yoshida had a pretty cool answer of it's not something that they have been planning for, but it sounds like a really good idea, so they'll try to consider it after 4.0.
does does that give you enough of a little uh oh is that is that my thing enough of a bumper a thing for the thing that i want to talk about just trying to hand it to uh. you so last episode <laughs> We Great ended the episode, show. By the way. Yes, last episode we ended on talking about what we wanted. Well, the whole show was about what we wanted for Stormblood, and the last thing we talked about was probably our biggest thing. But I don't think we got you didn't get enough out of me. There was some salt there. I don't think <laughs> I got a whole lot of reserve salt <laughs> um, for free companies. Uh, and hot damn, I I I want. <laughs> I want them to be good. Like, don't take, don't get this wrong. I know if you're a, a free company leader or somebody's like got a successful free company, you may think there's nothing that needs to change. Everything's all right in the world. I have plenty of people in my FC. What about the people that are trying, like desperately trying to to build an FC? Like, I see it on our server, and yet again, that could be just fan for it. Maybe fan for it's the special cookie out of this, and maybe not because. I asked some of our other content creator friends, is it just our server or is your server like this as well? And it's in, in, the, in a roundabout way, the, the answer is all summed up to yeah. It's not just a fan for it's the special snowflake. It's the this is the mentality and the mindset of the players for Final Fantasy 14. So before I get into... The thing, the I, I think, yeah, the salt. I think the the first thing we could probably hit, probably the easiest change that that we could see in Stormblood, the easiest change that they could implement, four point one, four point two, is just, and it, it's something even like I said, Chili had asked in, in the Mog Talk interview with Yoshida. Achievements, like just he wanted it for raiders. I want it for FC houses, FC groups. Now, How? Go ahead. I'm. I'm going to kind of burst your bubble a little bit you said the easiest thing to implement <laughs> on your list here will be achievements and uh -huh. i'm going to go and say it's probably actually one of the harder things on your list to implement why uh, there, there, there's no system for it currently as yoshida pointed out in the mob talk interview uh they haven't really thought about how it might be done we don't uh -huh. necessarily know if they have that information stored right now um, okay. And they're currently working on towards things such as the North American uh, data server migration and moving all of that stuff. And I just, it would be a completely new system, which while it, it would be a really interesting to do, it's definitely something completely new where some of these other ones I think are kind of in the game uh, or they already have uh, systems in place in the game that they could just improve. I need. Should have downloaded Picard saying "Make it so." <laughs> Just click it every time I say something that I want. Make it so. Just make it so. Uh, All right, I, but I'd have to get the yeah, face palm. Okay. All right. Um. Well. Okay. Well. All right. So, like I said, maybe not four point oh, like right off the bat, but four point two, four point three. I mean, you could, like I said, you could something really with the hand. 5.0. Oh, I gotta wait a uh, whole it, a patch expansion. I don't know about 5.0, but even like this is eight months down the road, it depends on. I ha I don't know their systems, and I don't know how long it would take them to implement something like that. But to basically design the entire system would probably take a little bit for them. Do you think Especially having to take into all of their existing systems and limitations and requirements. And they've made a little bit more space with not having to support PS3, but we don't necessarily know how much that's given them either. All right. Well, do you think they are still restricted by 32 bit operating systems? Momentarily. For now. For now. It's a wink, better at get your ass upgraded. Um. Not you, Shen. I'm just... <laughs> oh, I know that I need to do that too. That's a separate yeah. topic. You know, get... dude, bro. That's like I still want to run an XP. I keep the dream alive. Um. 
All right, well, let's still let's still let's still discuss achievements though. It's not a bad idea though, right? It's something that you could they could focus on. No, as an it's a great idea. I I absolutely love these when they were implemented in uh, EverQuest too. I mean, you could do FC gathering achievements like gather x amount of like oh wow you guys gathered you know a hundred thousand wood or uh or you defeated a, you know as a as a fc you've over everybody's inclusion have defeated so many braid bosses or something like you unlock cool shit for your like for your fc house you can unlock like oh cool we got a statue or we got I think, like titles would even be kind of awesome titles um anything like clothing like special like like I, like stuff that's like, oh, hey, you know, you can have uh, a gear with your your company sigil on, or your FC sigil on it or uh, or work towards even like I know we're going to get our personal space expanded, but I would love it if the like, oh, OK, so you could even get it um, to unlock like more chest space in, for the, the, the house, like an achievement, like, you know, collect a group amount of gill like they look at how much you know like oh if we reach 200 you know million gill and then i oh, will unlock like another four spaces in tab or i think it's kind of an interesting approach as well like there are multiple levels here that they could take advantage of you have people that want to do achievements because they like to get achievements you have people that uh want to do them because it helps promote some um interaction with other people it allows fcs to work together to play content together to accomplish things you'll get people that want the titles or the gear it's another way to reward players for doing things that they might already do um, kind of like the wondrous tales added stuff so that people would go and play older content and they added the roulettes so that people would actually continue to run content um, they could add these free company achievements or just achievement more achievements uh, that needed to be done by groups. Uh, you could do raid achievements or alliance achievements uh, or FC alliance achievements. All that sort of stuff would just give another avenue for players to both uh, to, to do other content or to repeatedly do more content to unlock different things. I remember when, when Warcraft added the achievements uh, for guilds, and even had silly ones like killing critters like that was something you could do and wow is just kill like not like normal uh creatures but like the little like font flora and fauna of the world like little squirrels and stuff that didn't have like attacks or eight like just had like a one hp like you killed what was it you killed like fifty thousand of them as an egg a, a guild and you got like a you got a, a minion you got like a little creature that followed you around i think it was like a gopher or something <laughs> Like, or, or yeah, some silly. It was some so stupid, but it was like, but it was something. Like it was something so silly. But as you're running through the world, like when you're doing your like AOE spells, you'd end up killing those creatures anyway. Something so minute still got you something, and it was silly. And I we, I knew one day, like I think as a guild, we re we went out and just it was like, let's kill every fucking squirrel in sight. I think no, like I think on one zone we were just like a mass murdering spree of all the creatures. It was terrible. I can definitely see you in the FC going out and murdering all the little tiny creatures. Oh, yeah. Imagine like 15 to 20 people running around going, Duh! We ranked I mean, goblin. that's kind of what happened on Friday, too. So, yeah, it's cool. We would find places, we would look, even look up specific places that spawned a lot of little creatures, like, <laughs> made it a point to just go out there and destroy them. Gotta go kill the boars. Uh huh. But it was stuff like that that made things fun. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I know that a lot of FCs take time to do things like dance parties and costume uh, contests. And they even do fashion shows. And, like, that's cool. But, listen, I'm not a dance party guy. Like, I, I I'm not a dance party guy in real life. There's just sure the fuck no way I'm dance partying my ass in game. <laughs> like, I just, I mean, for silly, sure. But, like... Yeah, like I don't know. I'd rather I'd rather be the person's like, bros. Let's go out and I'll hide someplace in the world. I know you guys can see me, but I'll, let's I'll go make out it. and slaughter a whole bunch of little creatures. Yeah, let's go out and do that. <laughs> but you know what? That made for a fun night. <laughs> Questioning they didn't. my choice of FC now. Uh huh. <laughs> I do. You want the dance party? <laughs> I go out and dance in game. Yep. 
Would you? Would you dance I mean, in a? Would you go to your house and dance? I mean, I used to just sit at AFK and be dancing. That's what I do now. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like, is it just my character sitting AFK and sitting in chat and I'm just chatting while my character dances? Glamoured. <laughs> Klaus in chat, you can dance if you want to. You can leave your cares behind. <laughs> but if my FC doesn't dance, I'm probably going to stay with those fucks. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> stay with those guys. Um, listen, if the safety dance played at that party, I'd probably be okay with that. That's not on the orchestrian, though. <laughs> but, I, like, the, but still, though, like, that's, it's not for me. And to be honest, it may not be for a lot of the people in RFs. Not, maybe a couple of them. <laughs> but it's not for everybody. Like, I think a lot of us would rather run content or do something silly, like... Let's all just group for PvP and just have a blast one night and drink and do that. I and still need my bright pink robe for PvP. Yeah, see? <laughs> it needs to be a thing. Yeah. Like, imagine, like, ten people all in a hot pink attire going into PvP and just saying, like, don't worry, guys, we got this. That described my old EverQuest 2 guild. Yeah, see? <laughs> You see a group of people in hot pink running down at you. You're like, what is going on? <laughs> like, your first thought is, like, I, we, normally in PvP, you're like, we need to kill the opposing team. When you see, like, a mob of people in hot pink, your first initial thought is, like, what the hell is going on? And then you die. So, it's more of a, it's more of a strategy slash tactic from us. <laughs> but, I mean, there's going to be PvP achievements. Like, the, the achievements is it's just the starting point. My next point is built-in tools. Uh, both a, a third. I wish we had third party. I'll get to that. <laughs> but let's start with built-in tools first. Yeah, I think Final the, Fantasy suffers from a extremely primitive guild management and guild recruitment tool. Like their in-game guild utilities are just kind of lacking overall. I feel. Um, Although I did end up diving into Warcraft for a couple months last year, and their guild tools are actually, I think, more horrendous than Final Fantasy's. But I came from playing with EverQuest for a number of years, and their guild management tools are amazing, hands down. They are. They're so good. I would love to see that system implemented here, because it would work so well. It was oh. beautiful. You had... Um, I don't. I don't think they had. Last time I played, I don't think they really had calendar events for the FC or for the guild uh, implemented. But they had uh, player notes. They had officer notes. They had banking permissions. They had guild achievements. They had a whole like audit of what the guild's been doing, not just small stuff like, "Hey, so and so put the chocobo in the stable." It'd be like, "Hey, so and so hit level fifty. So and so let hit level 80. Uh, you could do stuff like the whole guild just killed this raid boss. That was awesome. We're back to the achievements. Uh, they allowed you to have like your guild message, which we do have in Final Fantasy. But it, it also came in a really nice UI that wasn't really hard to navigate. Uh, it lets you do stuff like banking permissions, uh, like roles for different uh, for officers and ranks and stuff like that. Uh, it gave you a lot more flexibility around that than we kind of see right now. I'd also want to point out that they had the ability of taking, like, let's say if there were raid weapons from previous bosses, like the whole, like, guild had, you could, everybody can mount them to the wall. Like, um, like imagine, like, taking your, an like, everybody working on their anima, or working even on their Alexander weapons, and they're like, all right, well, we defeated Alexander, we're moving on to Stormblood content, we all have new weapons right now, let's mount our, our, these weapons. Like, I understand, like, they want to add, um, like, the dummies, and we can put our gear on, like, our old gear on, but, like... I would love to mount my weapon to the wall. I would love for the FC to mount all their weapons to the wall and be like, bro, like, like, like all of us got our weapons from Alexander and that's cool. Like there they are. And they like, they're, if there's any effects on them, they're like, their effects are glowing on the wall. I'm okay with that. Like, I think that's kind of cool. I think, uh, yet again, back to the achievements An achievement for defeating the last boss, you get some sort of, like I said, something for the house that you could show off your kill. I think that's really cool. I think that would be like a little, that's like saying like us as an FC did this 
thing. Like I and, and I say, it's not t- yet again. And I know people out there in statics are like, well, that's going to take away from us being able to do open party statics. No, it doesn't. It doesn't take away from that. It just adds something more for people that do statics within an FC. You still have the option. Like you don't have to do it from a form of a, a, a an, a, an FC. So, uh, to like it, that the way that when we did with EverQuest two, they didn't actually implement it so that it was only guilds that could put mount weapons on the wall. It wasn't only guilds that could have raid trophies displayed in there. You could display. Uh, actually, I'm not completely sure on the raid trophies. That might have been a, an FC house only thing or guild hall only thing. But uh, okay. at least with the weapons mounting them on the walls, uh, that can be done just in normal housing as well. The head is Oz. You can't have it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, at least by the time that I left, uh, everyone had a billion heads because everything just died. <laughs> everyone had head. All right, EverQuest 2, everybody gets head. All right. So, I don't know, that may be the MMO, <laughs> best MMO 2017 EQ2. Uh, the other thing that I really liked with, uh, at least from the guild and raid leader perspective of EverQuest 2, uh, they had a pretty decent in-game recruitment tool where uh, I number of people could be deemed as recruiters in the game and they would be able to basically field questions for people interested. So right now, uh, Final Fantasy has this system where they are, uh, you can apply to a guild and, but there's not really any way to necessarily talk to these people beforehand. I think you can't whisper someone online to get some more information uh, unless you happen to run across a player and you're like, hey, what's this FC like? Uh, so having that tool allowed people to kind of explore and there was a whole listing that you could see kind of like we have right now where you can see this is a hardcore guild or this is a role-playing guild or this is a crafting friendly guild uh, or this is an east coast based guild like you could see different characteristics of the guilds and then filter out or search by those parameters so you could check out like oh yeah i really want like a hardcore raid guild who on the server could i join um, and giving that p- flexibility to the player, they can get, go through and start shopping for F- or for guilds and see what might be interesting to them. And then when they found some that might be interesting, they could just go and say, hey, ping a recruiter and uh, see if someone can answer some questions for me before I go and join this thing. It's, it's taking that application system they have now and just adding a couple things to it to make it a little bit better for both parties, really not only for the person applying, but for the person for the FC, because you know, you don't want somebody that just applies and, and you go in and you have people are like, Oh, look a new person and just clicks accept because right now I think the mentality is like, it's okay if we have 200, 300, some odd 500 members in our, in our FC. Cause we're just, we just want to be the biggest FC cause it's going to be the biggest social club. And I think that's wrong because sometimes if that's what you want and, and you're always like, I'll use Chili as an example. Chili had told me that his guild has like, I think 500 players in it, but Chili still logs in and makes sure that he goes in and says, does anybody need any help? And that's 500 potential people to say yes. <laughs> um, he's also the person complaining that he needs more friends because he's maxed out, maxed out his 200 person friends list. Chili is a special, <laughs> Chili is a special, special banana. <laughs> potato 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 it's okay um but it's you gotta like look at it from and and, and these are game this is all in game tools now if they also when when shin had mentioned that that the tools in warcraft were horrendous now this is where i'm going to talk about third party tools blizzard never needed to implement the tools because modders did the tool that that work for them um calendars no problem there's an app there's a there's a mod for that uh better recruitment tools there's a mod for that there there were so many different mods and add-ons that uh, a guild leader or even fc officers could use to to grow and build and work with a group that you had so many things. You even had websites dedicated to certain things like uh, tracking your guild's uh, raid progress against the other guilds on your specifically your server, the world, and stuff like that. And looking like we do all right, have those too. We yeah, but not not to like down to statistics and like breaking it down. Like I mean, it was deep. It was deep. Like you could see like 
different party compositions and what people were doing and like gear and like uh, gemming and like like it got down to like the gear sets and the rotations people were using like it got down deep like it, you could go and be like oh that's what that's the rotation their their mage is using and our mage is doing this oh but he's getting an extra like 20k dps so hey you might want to try this and you can help your mage out a little bit like they're always asking like hey how can i get better and as an F as an fc or guild leader you want to help them and you could i was able to go out and look at those things and say why don't you try this rotation out and see if that works for you and see if you can pump those numbers your gear is the same but maybe this rotation offers something a little bit different in that case, I was like, be able to go and dump, do that and send them to there and send them links and be like, all right, try this out. We'll try it next time we go raiding or we'll try it on the dummies and we'll take a look and we'll run your numbers. And and even that, like a deep, like I know, oh, DPS meters are in the game. But if you're doing raiding or if you're doing content where you're trying to help people like hit certain numbers so that you can beat the content, having that tool <laughs> helps. Uh, as long as you're using it nicely in a correct, safe manner, for everybody, you don't be a dick about it. But like, it's good to n let people know. As long, I mean, listen, listen, it's out there. You she he's acknowledged it. I don't care. I'm talking about. He knows it's there. So I'm gonna be on the opposite side, and I am very much pro DPS meter, but at the same time, I'm also pro community, and I've seen DPS meters being used horrendously more often than they've been used well. Well, yes. And so I am completely fine with them not bringing these capabilities to Final Fantasy natively and uh, the, the few people that do choose to use them and have access to them, by all means, uh -huh. go nuts. Because if you start being a dick about it, you're going to get kicked out. But all right, so I'm but, saying... Uh, so on the same topic, though... I, I don't think that is a good idea to allow third party mods and tools for these sorts of things, specifically because it removes that ability from players to discover that information or to have it. When I started playing Warcraft last year, the first thing I had to go out and do was download a whole bunch of mods and stuff just so I could play <laughs> the biggest game. Like, why do I want to play a game where the first thing I have to do is figure out how the UI works? Because have you seen, their initial UI sucks. I, I'm aware. Like I did use their UI for a bit, and I did move on to other things. But and I and I also modded my EverQuest 2 UI. That's not something that I I don't mind UI modifications inherently. It's the third party add-ons and mods that I'm not a fan of, because I shouldn't have to go and download a whole bunch of other things in order to play uh, a game at the same level as everybody else. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree, but you don't have to do it, though. Like, that was my point, is that the, like, as a guild... But you do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, it's I, it's hard, because I'm not, I mean, I'm, specifically, there, there are tools for GMs, like, 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 the guild leaders and raid leaders to go look at stuff. And that stuff, that's the stuff I'm kind of touching on is like that kind of those kind of things. Now, there are also tools for guild management. I think that's fantastic. I think those tools were really well done, uh, like being able to I, and this is something that you can implement in game where it's like a calendar to set set up uh, things, which was something like a third party tool you could do as well. Um, but the only thing is that you have to have everybody get that mod. And I'd rather see it in game. Like, trust me, when I say this, I'd rather see everything in game. I'd rather see it in game. I'd rather see it in game or on a square site that I can go look at myself. Um, I mean, I, I don't mind third party tools like because I've used them in the past and they could be a great tool if utilized correctly. That, that's what I want to stress. Utilize correctly. Don't use them to be a dick. <laughs> but use them as a developer. Correctly. And one of the things that I've noticed is that your users Everyone won't use, use what you want. They won't use your software how you intend them to use it. They will find every other possible way to use it in the way that you never, ever intended it to do. You're like, I used it to make pizza. How the hell did you get pizza? Exactly. Like There are things that I've seen, and I bring this up when developing new projects and stuff. It's like, what if the user did this? And they're like, no, the user will never do that. And I'm like, no, the user will definitely go out and do that. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree. Like I, I can't say that that didn't happen. But yeah, yeah. Klaus, Klaus and chat never underspent the power of pizza. 
it's like the whole the user's never going to stupidly put something bad into the system because why would they do that? The answer is because they can. If, they if you can. allow them to do things, then they will find every way to get that system out. And I think that's the same thing with the DPS meter specifically, that if there's a way to record DPS, there is now a way for every other player to find out everyone's DPS and therefore use it to start yelling at players. And I think as a community, we've done a really good job of if someone's being a dick and complaining about DPS, we call them out on it because it's not accepted within Final Fantasy. But in other MMOs, that's not the case. And you go out and someone's like, oh, you're not doing 600 DPS. We're going to kick you out. Yes. Um, but, all right. So I'm not trying to point specifically at it because D- I think DPS meter is a whole other topic. I didn't want to make it about the DPS meter itself. I was saying like more like there are like there were websites where you could look at statistics specifically, not even just DPS, but like ra- like other raid statistics. Like how long did it take us to do down this boss versus this other group? And like are we're having issues with this part of the boss. And let me see what other people are doing or what the, the makeup is or what are, what like you could break it down to like what the rotation is of every class so that, you know, like, all right, like there is something there that we're we're doing something wrong so um <clears throat> anyway let's let's move on to uh the <laughs> let's move on to something uh i think that could also be implemented in the game and i think a lot maybe a little bit easier than built-in tools and achievements possibly should may tell me i'm wrong uh is fc specific content now this is not content spec- like i think it's still content that everyone can do but i think that much like Diadem, where we had the, the the airships to go take us there, I think it would be a cool way to take use airships to go take us someplace else and do content with the FC. What do you think? Like another dance party on an airship? Sure. <laughs> it's like a party bus, except less stripper poles or do more. I don't know. <laughs> Eighty-seven stri- all stripper poles. The whole thing is just made of what's it's just one giant stripper pole with a blimp. That's all it is. It's the it's the airship that we use to get to Dune Sky, Dune Sky, the the dick ship that one. <laughs> I can see Sid doing that with the Enterprise. Klaus said some chat. You know, simple things like stripper poles everywhere, dimmer switches, dimmer switches everywhere. You don't need a dimmer switch if it's outside. <laughs> so I, I think this is an interesting idea, but I don't actually know how complicated this would be. Mostly around, like, I don't think there are any systems right now that only benefit you if you go in with an FC-only group or you queue up through uh, an FC-specific interface, kind of like Diadem. Um, I haven't read up on anything or I was able to find any information that pointed out that FC-made groups in Diadem uh, are any different from the normal groups that are made apart from the FC groups are uh, going through the Cerulean tanks and the other ones going through just the tokens. The tokens, yeah. Uh, if, I mean, I know Klaus, has, I believe, has done the 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 FC version of Diadem before the change. Um, I'm not sure if there's a difference between the changes now and before, but if there was like a major difference between the content before with the FCs, let us know because there that that would be a big difference in like seeing that go forward which i think it should be an option i think that uh no now no difference uh, between fc and ishgard uh now there's no difference but before there was a difference there had to be a difference uh and that's sad i think there should be a difference i think there should be a way to promote <sighs> i don't please anybody listening to this don't I'm not, I don't want to sound like a dick. I'm going to sound like a dick, but I don't want to sound like a dick. Used to be you could only uh, access hard mode f- from FC. See, I think that's, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an okay thing. I think that's fine. I, I think hard, like saying, hey, you know, if you want to do the hard mode of this thing, you should do it as your FC. Like, I think that's an okay option. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with that. I know there's somebody who's like, I don't need FCs to have fun, and you're taking away my ability to do content. <laughs> you're also taking your ability away to do Savage because you don't have the gear for it. So Yeah, uh... yeah there you go. Listen, people spent millions building the airships. 
Yes. Thank you. Like I may have inherited ours, but still, but still, make airships great again. Thank you. Like people put fucking gill into these airships. Now they're just what? Nothing. They just sit there collecting dust. What's the point? There's like I, I don't get. You can't sell them. I, I do think that there's an argument to be made that FCs should have access to additional content or slightly different content or have some sort of bonus, maybe like. Maybe they go into there and they get an XP boost or they get a drop boost or they get something. Uh, maybe it's not even necessarily a diadem. Maybe it's back to the, the achievement sort of system. You go and you queue up and it gets, uh, you, you get a bonus for queuing as an FC or you get something. I already, already got it. I already got the easiest thing you could do. The easiest thing you freaking implement. And you could do it now. You could do it right now, and it wouldn't even change anything. It would it just, just, that FCs get a higher chance, just saying, higher chance at getting the emergency mission. Just a, like a 5% difference versus the normal mode. Did that the only reason why I would say don't do that is because uh -huh. of the amount of salt that would come out of that decision. Fuck them! It doesn't matter, Fuck them! Fuck them! Get just... out! <laughs> no! Get out! Fuck them! <laughs> get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! <laughs> Alright, no, I deserve this. It's my fault. It's only, it's only a game. game. Why do you Why have, you to, have be to be mad? Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, I, guess. I deserve that. That double play, that's fine. I'll, I'll leave that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that's the first time I got real loud on this show. But it's true, though. I mean, fuck. Like, you can't, I, god damn it, community, what the fuck do you want? You want everything. You can't have everything. You cannot. You can't. You cannot have everything. You can't. I understand, but you cannot have it all. You can't. You have to give content to other parts of this community. Like, there's people that want to do stuff with their FCs, and what you're telling them is, fuck you, I want it all. Like, that's not fair. Like, I don't think that is fair. To, to the people that want to have guild content. I think it's cool to have guild content because that tells people like, you know what? You're playing an MMO. You're playing a social fucking game. Get out there and play it. Like, I understand that you want to be the special cooking. You don't want to deal with people. And I understand that you may have anxiety and dealing with people's heart. I, I get that. There are tons of people like that in the world. I, I My heart goes out to you. It does. But there are people that are sitting in FCs and they're like, what do I do in this thing besides talk to people and fucking live in a house? They're useless. FCs are useless in this game otherwise. What are they more than a chat room? Right now they're not. And I, I think that's the, the whole argument here is that FCs really are a glorified link shell and they shouldn't be. They, they should be so much more. Exactly. Exactly. Anybody that's not listening to this episode, I feel bad for you because, one, I think last week's episode was really good. This one, I think, got real. <laughs> I don't say you got 99 problems and they're all FC related. <laughs> Fucking goddamn. You're not lying. I mean, I, I mean, I, am I, I, am I wrong? I, know, I don't think you, I don't, I don't think you personally think I'm wrong because I think you agree with me. Um, I agree. FCs, I think, are broken in this game. I, so I just think you may not be as angry. As me about it. No, I am definitely not as angry as you. <laughs> it's just, maybe I may have summoned my own self from the primal world. <laughs> Is that possible? Can some? Can I? Well, I guess uh, you say I could do it. I guess I can do it too. Just as a warning to everyone else, there the USDA or the FDA does in fact have a. Uh, maximum daily recommended limit of salt intake i think we're getting close to that limit here yeah it's getting all right let's <laughs> fcs aren't broken there just isn't any reason for them i, I think that's the you're problem. right no it's... that's right you can invite people to them so they're win. they're not broken in that format well i i think they're broken because the purpose for them is to have some sort of community-based system in the game and there isn't I mean, and I get it. Like, I, I, for example, let's take Luna and uh, Roll uh, and uh, Roll Hyperion, right? That whole guild, that whole FC in in 
is something she's very proud of and, and by, by all means super successful because she took something that wasn't on a server and created it. But given better tools, I think she could take that and rule that server, like instantly rule that server, set up special events, special quest. Like if they gave us the ability to like role players gave uh, like like if you had the events pop off as timers and you'd be like, all right, it popped up on your screen. If you're a part of the event, like a quest, you'd be like, all right, that, that, and then you read you could like set up the, the text you can get role players could ro roll with that instantly. Like I'm just thinking like you. I'm just saying, like, look, look at not just me, but like take somebody that may be in a role playing like type FC and then using like a calendar type system that could pop up and say this is happening and say quest da, 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 and you read it and you're like, all right, cool. Let's go do the quest. <laughs> like, I think that'd be really cool. <sighs> all right. Let me just saying. I'm just saying it's more than a house. I, I'm going to going to wrap it up. <laughs> <sighs> all right yes perfect example klaus take a stage reborn for example uh, an entire fc dedicated to not only i mean role playing but actually doing plays from within the final fantasy games phenomenal i mean like if you've not seen the play i would suggest going on youtube and go watch it um i still am actually you know what we, that may be a show, a future show. Let me remind me to go message their their leaders. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um. So let me let me let me wrap this up. I I think that throwing putting FC putting this kind of community the ability to do community events. Um, growing a community it's part of mmos like why would you play an mmo just to play a single player version of a game i mean that's what final fantasy 15 is for um hell that's why any single player mm uh, a role-playing game is there the world is there for, for it for you to do the thing like and i get it like you can log in you get some limited social aspect because that's your choice but why would you want to take that away from every, like thousands upon thousands of other people that want to foster a community want to grow that there's nothing wrong with an fc there's nothing wrong with having specific content for specific groups i mean role players got their own little signal thing above their head so you know they're role playing and i see nothing wrong with that so i think it's a shame to let it go <laughs> Klaus, Klaus in chat. Nah, we're just a bunch of NPCs. But we could be more than that. I think we could be more than that. I think that Square and Yo especially specifically Yoshi P, if you somehow hear this, I know the community members may have to hear this. Bayonne or Akmar and whoever decides to listen to this episode. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you're in FCs too. I'm sure you're you're playing with other people, and I'm sure you want to see this taken and, and broaden and grow. Like this game is fantastic. And if you can give people certain people tools, it could be your FCs would be flourishing and be so amazing. It'd be one of the most socially cool games in the world. Like I think that builds a good game. I think the same, like, dude, you know, like my FC did this on my server. We were really cool. We're really proud of it. Like, damn, I want to see that. No, no, Shin, you got any? I got nothing. All right. Not, not that we haven't talked about it. Yeah. So, I, don't know. I mean, I it was a rant. It's, I'll, I'll just end it with this. Square, just do better. I mean, I you do, you're doing good. But I think this is something you can do better at. And I think a lot of it, some of it, I think you can maybe work on now. Maybe some of it's even just quality of life. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Should you want to? I, oh, I definitely want to point out that uh, if anyone does want to uh, or has any strong opinions on this, because uh, apparently one of us does, uh, they could almost always send an email to show at maelstromradio.com, tweet us at maelstrom underscore radio on Twitter, or post to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash maelstromradio. Thanks, buddy. Uh, so.
I think that's pretty much it. I need a drink. <laughs> yeah, I got water. Um, uh, we want to thank you. I think next week is the. Th- oh yeah, yeah. Next week, I, I don't. I, he's in. All right, listen. Spoilers. Can, can, can I not nope. talk about the? Oh no. Nope. Shin says I can't, so I guess I, guess I can't nope. talk about what's going on next week. Okay. I mean, Get if you tell, if you, all right. Listen, I, oh no, he said go ahead. No, I need to build the suspense so that everyone's confused and doesn't know what's going on. No, but he said I can do it. He said I can do the thing. Yeah, but then you don't get the hype. But, I mean, who are we hyping? <laughs> People. I want, all right, listen. All right, how about this? I'll, I'll, I'll dance around it. Next Monday, there's going to be a very, very special episode. Uh, it's going to be a part two, but part one is going to take place on Saturday. But not with Maelstrom Radio. Stay tuned. And I would suggest maybe, maybe, <laughs> Klaus and chat, Klaus's new Maelstrom Radio producer confirmed. <laughs> Only if he does our show notes. Yeah. Does that mean, yeah, I mean, it's probably the hardest thing. (laughs) Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing a special part two episode. Uh, Part one will take place on Saturday. I think the, uh, what maybe, who did they, who do they going to have to watch for that one? Got any ideas, Shin? No? Nothing? No? (laughs) I know. You know. Are we we supposed to? (laughs) He said we could. That's true. Uh, yeah, next week we are doing a special episode, and uh, you'll definitely want to keep watch on our Twitter and our information to see more about that. But you should just hint, maybe keep an eye out on Phoenix Down Radio, Google Go Round Radio, and the Maelstrom accounts. Yep. So that's on the. We didn't. If we didn't milk that for all it's worth, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for uh, coming out, uh, listening live here at um, twitch.tv forward slash Maelstrom Radio. Uh, yeah, let us know if you have strong opinions about this or anything we talked about last week. Oh, we have one email and I would feel like crap if we didn't read it real quick. Can I, I'm going to jump over to my email and read that. We have one email. They sent it to us. I always wait a week. I could. But we, we, can, we can start off our next week with it. All right. We can do that. All right. Well, uh, Meowth, we're going to read your uh, email next week. I promise you. It'll be next week. We'll start. We'll. That's the first thing. We'll even start the show notes. I'll put, make sure that's the first thing on the show notes for next week uh, so that we read your email. I do apologize. We do have to get out of here. Um, see you all next Monday. You might see us. You might see well hear us sooner than that. But uh, see you all next Monday for episode thirty-one. Uh, we will be at that point nineteen episodes away. Uh, next, nope. Next Monday is a special episode. Uh, are we still hold, we're still holding off on that following episode because I think it's still a really cool special idea. And we just have a really we have a, a few episodes planned now for the next little while. So uh, yeah, please look forward to it. Yeah, please look forward to it. Um, so Shin, say goodbye to everybody as I mute you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, we have uh, a couple souls in the bank ready to go. Shin's dancing. <clears throat> so, uh, I would, uh, I do encourage you to really uh, share your thoughts. I really want to know if you think I'm crazy or wrong about the FCs. If you're an FC leader and you think I'm wrong, let me know. Um, I really want to know. I think that's a discussion I think I can even take to Twitter and I may take it to Twitter after our show, put it out there. Like if you're an FC leader, how do you, th- what improvements you can make? And I want to know cause I'm not having it <laughs> anyway to see swallows all keep listening.
Maelstrom Radio is a production of MaelstromRadio.com, Blackfire Media Productions. Final Fantasy XIV and Aorzea are trademarks of Square Enix. Opening theme provided by Benjamin Anthony James. You can find more of their music over at SoundCloud.com forward slash Ben773. Our outro is provided by Sodo. You can find more of their music over at SoundCloud.com forward slash Sodo. Views and opinions expressed on this episode are of those of Males from Radio and their hosts, and do not reflect the views and opinions of Square Enix. And until C swallows all, keep listening.